anyway, the one time I experienced racism, yeah, it didn't happen to me, but I, I observed it. Now, me, I will go down every avenue before I go down the racism avenue. So one time, we're talking like 018, 019, yeah? I went to go and work in a data center in Poplar, which is E14, near the, near the River Thames, them sides there, right near the Blackpool Tunnel, actually. And the data center is basically where they have all the data. Yeah, you know, all the cloud storage and that, I worked at one of them places there. Obviously doing the electrical installation and inspection and testing. Them. So um, obviously the construction world in England is white dominated, obviously. And um, yeah, I went there and I said to the manager of the electrical company, so obviously on a construction site, you're going to have different trades. You're going to have mechanical, you might have some carpenters, depends on the type of construction site. You're not going to have kitchen fitters in a data center. It's not that type of construction site. So anyway, the, ele the electrical manager of the, con uh, of the company that was doing the electrical on this construction site, I said to him, yeah, I've got my triple STS so I can be a supervisor if you're looking for any supervisors. And he said, nah, well, Ramo. He literally said it like that, Ramo, meaning we're fully booked, like we don't need any supervisors, yeah? I said, all right, cool. Just thought I'd ask, yeah? Because obviously I've wanted to be an inspector and tester, but might as well just ask. Anyway, about maybe three, four days, maybe a week later, a random supervisor turned up, yeah? So supervisors wear black hats. And um, I thought that was a bit odd, you know, that the su a supervisor turned up. He told me that they had no more space for supervisors, but then they got a supervisor on the job. Right. So anyway, when this supervisor turned up, there was a few other guys that turned up at the same time as him. Now, I don't think they knew each other. They just happened to have started on the same day. Yeah? Now, there was this older black man he was an older black man, like 60 years old. He just oozed management material. Like, you know, there's some guys you will meet in life and you just know, I know you're not a supervisor. I know you ain't management material. You are just a worker. You have no leadership. You have no air of authority about you. When you speak, nobody listens. You may as well be Charlie Chaplin, them sort of people there, innit? But this older black man that I met, and you meet a, old, a lot of older black men, he just came across like he was a supervisor. Whereas other older black men that I've met, and white men, you can tell that they're not supervising material. So anyway, boom. So he was wearing a white hat and that, and I saw him doing some work. Now, just because a man's wearing a white hat doesn't necessarily mean that he's, a su he's not a supervisor. He might just not have a black hat. So I saw him doing some work and I said to him, oh, I thought you was a supervisor, you know, when I saw you walking around in the changing room. I thought you was a supervisor and I saw him walking around on the site with a white hat. I thought he was a supervisor. He just didn't have a black hat, he had a white hat. And he said, no, nah. he said he came on to be a supervisor on the contract, on the job. But the manager, the boss that I asked, he said, oh, there's no, we don't need any supervisors, but we'll still pay you to be a supervisor but you just go on ahead and be a worker. So you're getting paid as a supervisor, but you're a worker. So he said, I'm not gonna argue with that. And he carried on working. So anyway, so little rain check. Remember, I asked to be a supervisor. The guy said, there's no space for supervisors. Then a white guy came, he, he became a supervisor. The black man came at the same time as the white man who was supposed to be, who became a supervisor, but he was told to be a worker, okay. About two weeks after that, one of my colleagues, yeah, one of my teammates, he's just an electrician. He's not an inspector and tester, he's just an electrician. The boss, who I asked about becoming a supervisor, the boss made him a supervisor. I thought, this has to be racism. This has to be a case of he doesn't want, want no black people being in a position of power 
or any position of authority. So that's the only time I'll say, yeah, that guy's racist. That guy's racist. And at the end of the day, facts is facts. But I was in the office, in his office, in the, in the, in the boss's office, and him and some other white guy was talking about just youth on the street. And he was openly talking about it. And you know what? Facts is fact. I can't argue with him. And he was saying, yeah, a lot of these black kids who are going around killing each other, they come from single parent households and that. But like, and that is a complete fact. But it's the fact that me being a black person in his presence, he didn't feel no way to mention it. Now, really and truly, it's only someone who probably is racist yeah, I mean, you can look at it from two different sides. Someone who is racist might think twice about saying that. But if you're not racist, then you know deep down you can say it and not feel guilty for speaking like that. But we live in a PC. I mean, England is a PC country and that. And yeah, he was too open. He, he was a bit too confident with saying that. Yeah, a lot of these young black kids that are going around stabbing each other in London, a lot of them come from single parent households and they don't have any dads to guide them anyway. And obviously, I can't argue with it. I'm not going to say, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? So, yeah, that's, I mean, uh, he probably was a racist still. A lot of them Essex men, apparently they're racist. So.